please. Get that nigga dead Prescott up out of here. Please. He ain't doing nothing. Get that Detroit shit. You feel me? Rep the D. You understand? Hey. Cowboys ain't doing nothing. They don't get rid of that. And they gotta get rid of Jerry Jones. Hey, I agree with that. Question for you: Give How many fourth downs does it take to beat the Cowboys? Whoa! <laughs> 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 and we're we're walking away quickly on that. <sighs> well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Oh my goodness. It is hump day. So you know what that means. You know what that means. That means unless they, they ban me, they might've banned me from the Dan Leo show uh, after last week, having so much fun with Philly 500. And I believe that they said, yeah, you can laugh this week. You can laugh this week, but you're going to get killed by the Steelers. You're going to be two and five. Well, I guess what? <sighs> my birthday's tomorrow. And they gave me an early birthday present. Thank you very much, because I'm going to have fun today with Philly 500, especially after the biggest free agent signing of the offseason, as Philly 500 said it was, without playing a single play. Devin White got the bag and is gone from Philadelphia, where the shine is not shining anymore. And it's funny because the Eagle fans are a little butthurt about me saying something Wah, 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 wah. Okay. Be that as it may, we have a huge, 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 huge game. Huge game this weekend going against the Detroit Lions. And I want to remind you of the mentality of Dan Campbell, who was once a tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Here's the thing, and I'm going to say something about, you know, we always want something different. You know, a guy's got a great woman and stuff, and he's side-eyeing and looking and checking out this other woman, you know, and so, you know, oh, man, she looks so good and stuff, and, and leaves the good thing that he had and realizes, damn, I had some good shit here and fucked it up. You know what's funny? Because Dan Campbell, let me play this. I wanted this job bad because I felt like I knew this community. I played here. All right. Here's what I know. Just as an overall philosophy, you're going to say, well, what's this team going to be? What's it not going to be? Here's what I know. All right. I know that Detroit's made up of great people, some really good people. All right. This community is strong. Um, this place has been kicked. It's been battered. It's been bruised. And I can sit up here and give you coach speak all day long. I can give you, uh, you know, hey, we're going to win this many games. I can't. That uh, none of that matters, and you guys don't want to hear it anyway. You've had enough of that shit. So excuse my language. All right. Here's what I do know: is that this team is going to take on the identity of this city. All right. And the city's been been down, and it found a way to get up. All right. It's found a way to uh, overcome adversity. All right. And so this team's going to be built on. Uh, we're going to kick you in the teeth. All right. And when you punch us back, we're going to smile at you. And when you knock us down, we're going to get up. And on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off. All right. And we're going to stand up and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. All right. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap and we're going to get up. And then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you before before long. We're they going to be the last one standing. That, my friends, is the mentality that Dan Campbell has instilled with that Lions team. And I can say, um, I love the people in Detroit. We used to go from, let's see, the first year I guess was 20, uh, 2003 through about uh, 2015. United Way did the um, halftime show in Detroit. And we were always there for Thanksgiving. Always there for Thanksgiving. And Detroit became my second family. And the sad thing was, in the time that we were there every single year, I never saw the Lions win. But those fans were always there supporting those Lions. And now they have a coach who's a winner. The funny thing is, is 
I believe Lion fans wanted Robert Sala more than Dan Campbell originally. Most people looked at Dan Campbell and were like, Psh, he ain't going to last. You know, he, he's going to Detroit. This shit is going to go bad. You know, they made the trade with Matthew Stafford, getting rid of him and things. And here's what's funny. Of all the people that were hired in 21, Cowboy fans, some of y'all wanted Urban Meyer. Don't, don't act like you didn't. Don't act like you didn't. Oh, man, let's get Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer made it for six games with the Jags. Six freaking games. Also hired there was David Cudley. One year. Arthur Smith. Three years. Brandon Staley. Three years. And of course, Robert Sala. Three and a half years. The only other coach that was hired at the same time who's on the hot seat right now is Nick Sirianni. And so people thought that Dan Campbell was the worst hire out there. And he's the last man standing, along with Nick Sirianni, who has been cut off at the knees. That team is gritty. That team is tough. And we've got a tough road to hoe. And after having a rough week for our rookies, we had a hard week, gay people. Um, Marshawn Nealon, okay. And I didn't, I got it right this time. Okay, forgive me. Some people have been busting my balls because, uh, you know, I've, I've missed up, you know, uh, got a few names backwards. Forgive me, okay? We shoot this one time off the top of my head, and my head isn't that great. Marshawn Nealon had two tackles early in that game before he went out. And of course, he's got a sprained MCL. He's going to miss multiple weeks. Of course, he was in four. Uh, D. Ware as well. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Demarcus Lawrence, um, as well as Micah Parsons. See, I, I make those mistakes, so you have to understand. You, you're going to get that here. If you can't take that, then maybe you need to go elsewhere. All right. And of course, we got Tyler Guyton, who ended up um, with the groin strain. Although they say he may be okay for Sunday. But going against Chad Hutchinson, who is leading the NFL in sacks, I'm okay waiting before we rush Tyler Guyton back into performance. I'm really okay with that one. But I want to talk about something here. You know, I, I've, I've been, I've talked about him quite a bit, and that's Cooper Beebe. Here's what's amazing, Miss. I saw this yesterday on Dexter Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence, as a nose tackle, is going off in historic proportions. Dexter Lawrence right now, has, is uh, he's one of the top sack leaders. I think he's got five right now. Dexter Lawrence is on pace for 20 and a half sacks. 20 and a half sacks. If you don't understand the defensive line as opposed to edge rushers and things like that, 20 and a half sacks is a lot from the interior defensive line. That would be a record. Now, do I think he's going to get 20? No. That's just projections, but it's still crazy. But 55 tackles, 13 and a half tackles for a loss, and 78 pressures. That is literally a one-man wrecking crew. That's insane. Okay? He is on earth-shattering pace to break everything. But you know what's funny? I've got to pull the statistics up here because this lets you know, you know what? The Cowboys do some good shit sometimes. Sometimes they do get things right. Let's see if we can. Um, it won't grow. Okay. If we go through with Dexter Lawrence, who this week, okay, going against Seattle, had three sacks, Okay. Four combined tackles, two solos, two assists, two tackles for loss, and four quarterback hits. People, that's insane. Let me say this again. He got four quarterback hits and three sacks. Against Minnesota, he had three combined tackles, a tackle for a loss, quarterback hit, two assists. Okay? Okay. Against Washington, he had four combined tackles, two solos, two assists. Against Cleveland, um, 
four quarterback hits, one tackle for a loss, and um, two solo tackles. The reason I bring this up is when he played against the Dallas Cowboys, going mostly against Cooper BB, this wrecking ball, this pile of pain, this juggernaut was throttled by our juggernaut. He ended up the day with one quarterback hit, not against Cooper BB, and two tackles. The worst performance this guy had all season. Let's think about this for a second. Right now, he's playing like the best interior defensive lineman in a generation. And Cooper BB parade rested him. Guys, that's huge. That's huge. To be able to control Dexter Lawrence the way he did is um, unbelievable. Now, the philosophy for the Cowboys, here, here's what the Cowboys were thinking when they went into the draft. They looked at this and said, we need a center and we need um, a tackle or a guard. Tyler Smith can play tackle, but we don't want to have two newbies side by side. If we have to have a new center, then let's have two all pros on each side of them to protect them, to protect the middle. Because, you know, the uh, shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And that center to the quarterback is the straightest line. So they figured that the center would be the weak spot in the draft, especially drafting a guy in the third round, right? Okay. At the moment, the weakest link is actually the left tackle. Cooper Beebe right now is your third best offensive lineman. I got to say Tyler Smith, Zach Martin, Cooper Beebe. And so now the guy that needs to be protected is Terrence Steele and the guard if you move Tyler Smith out. And that's where you've got Cooper Beebe who is working great with Josh Ball, the combination blocks and stuff. Those guys, Cooper Beebe is playing like a veteran right now, five games into his career against one of the best in the business. And this is where I think that the Cowboys may be for the good of the offensive line in keeping this team together, maybe want to think about keeping Tyler Guyton up there. Because what happened in this game, and I hope that this is like the awakening for the Cowboys, uh, much like last year, it took a few weeks before the offense really got its groove. You saw the running game pick up. We finally got over 100 yards rushing. Thank God. And you saw Dak Prescott having enough time to really be able to do stuff in that second half, going against one of the best off defenses in football. And that by no measure is by the center. That center, if he ends up getting dropped off in the quarterback's lap, it's hard to get comfortable. It's hard to have a great game if it is. And this is where you look at it and say, okay, we can score some points now. We can score some points because we've got a Jalen Tolbert now who can move around and catch the football. And there's a trust factor there with Dak Prescott. C.D. Lamb, get his head in the game. He's good to go. He's going to draw the attention. And then you got Ferguson, who also is becoming the security blanket. If you can get the running game going and get one of these other tight ends being a viable target, you were going to see uh, uh, Brent Spann catching a few passes. You're going to see Schoonmaker from time to time making a catch. Then you're able to move the ball around more to where you have advantages. When we were reliant with just CeeDee Lamb, that's a recipe for disaster. And maybe this offense can give us some time. But understand, I wouldn't want to have Tyler Guyton coming back with a groin injury that you can re-aggravate against Chad Hutchinson, who is a speed guy. Let me keep Tyler Smith out there for one more week, at least, and see how it goes. Because the Lions, they're coming for your lunch and your kneecaps. So we want to make sure we have, forget your feelings about He's the first round guy and we got to play him right now. Right now, we have to get a win. If the Cowboys can find a way to get this win, 
This is like playing with house money at this point to me. Our schedule gets easier as the season goes on. You got the bye week, a chance to heal and get some of those players back. If you can go into the bye week at four and two, oh my God, that would be freaking insane. So let's hope that uh, we can get our shit together and find a way to finally get a win at home. Let's finish this off with the argument. Did Dak Prescott save the Cowboys season what would D-Fox say? I would say he staved off the end of their season. Okay. He didn't save it. Um, I don't think this team is very good. That was an impressive uh, uh, fourth quarter comeback from the Cowboys, which was nice. But I think this team has a lot more issues, and they're going to get uh, beaten by a bunch of the teams, especially coming up on this schedule. Well, so you weren't that impressed, and neither was Dan Orlovsky. He was here yesterday. I asked him if he was impressed with that win over Pittsburgh. Here's what Danny said. Not impressed at all. This is... Bad offense for Dallas, bailed out by bad offense for Pittsburgh. Three turnovers, two of them took points off the board. They avoid catastrophe, I'll give you that, but this is not an impressive win by the Dallas Cowboys. So, Dan is high. Monday, Monday Dan is back. <laughs> He's we back. used we to back. love some Monday Dan. Dan. He's tried to hone it in. He couldn't <laughs> hold himself. How is it not impressive? You, you, you lose your two top ends that aren't going to play. You go to Pittsburgh. You shut their, You're the most physical team by far on the field. You, it should not have been nearly as close as the score, indi- as the score indicated. That, that is as impressive as it gets to go beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh in a primetime game. This, not call that impressive is ridiculous. Hey, losing two top defensive linemen. They lost a third one early in the game. Their left tackle went out in the first half with an injury. Uh, they don't have Brandon Cooks, who's, their, who's I guess is their number two receiver. Like, yeah, it's an impressive win. There's no question about it. What Dak saved them from, though, is, is the trouble he put them in, right? Because there were turnovers early in that game. You're right. They could have won it by more. But, uh, yeah, coming back in that place. I was there. I was at that game. It ended a half hour ago. And, and, <laughs> and, and it, was, it, was, uh, it was impressive. Here, here, here's the thing. As the morning went on, I think Dan Orlovsky yesterday sort of clarified what he meant. It was less about it not being an impressive win, which, of course, every win is impressive on the road, at Pittsburgh, all that. Mm -hmm. It was really more, I'm not that impressed with the Cowboys. Meaning, I I really don't think they're that good, which I think a lot of people do agree with. I, I, I think Dan was trying to say... That wasn't. They don't look that good to me. They won the game, but gotcha. they don't look that good to me. And I think that's a. If, if one were to say that, what would D Fox? Say? Yeah, I would agree with Dan. But I mean, you don't got to clarify for Dan. He's a professional communicator. <laughs> man said. <laughs> man said what he meant. He, be able he to said make what he point. meant. Yeah. A pro, he gets paid to, com- to, to communicate. I love it. That man communicated and, yeah. something, and it was wrong. And we all sometimes <laughs> say stuff that's wrong. We get roasted. We don't need Greeny to come up and say, "Hey, but what I think he meant." No, nah. he sets us he so said well. What he, he sets us so well. Okay. Okay, well, then here's the question then. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a, I defend my guys. You guys I'm are good a, enough to come on here all the time. I'm going to defend you. Here's my question. You, if you're not buying Washington, who are you buying in that division? Is it Dallas? Uh, Eagles probably for me. Eagles? Eagles for me are, are – I would buy them. I think their roster is better overall. Can they put it together with Sirianni and Hurts and all the stuff that we – and I know they were off. That's going to be the issue Jeff? for me. But, but that's, that's – that's Who has a better quarterback? Between the Eagles or the or the Commanders? Oh, uh, the Commanders. <laughs> Commanders. Yeah, I mean, let me get I mean, I mean, he, he, he ended the question there. You could didn't almost, want to say, but no, no, I'm going to say this. You could almost say that about 28 teams. Like, oh, it's, the, that, that's is, why I'm he saying is they're, really they're going he to win it is really good. Yeah, so the other questions that I think Jeff could have asked you is, like, who has a better offensive line, who has more talent, who has more experience, who has more success. But I would say I would still sit, stick with Washington in part because – as much as I love all the talent that the Eagles have, it's been a long stretch where they, they have not been well. good. And this is like similar to the Kansas City conversation that we had earlier. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't want to get captured by what we know in the past. When we look at this team now, this Eagles team has not been good. Right. And Washington team has been getting better through the course of this season, and yeah. I think they will continue to do so. So I, I guess really what I'm trying to say here is we had Zach Ertz on the countdown cam. You know, we talked to these guys walking into the stadium. You listen to the way he's talking about Jaden Daniels. Oh. You listen to the way that team talks about mm-hmm. each other. Yeah. There's something good going on there. All right, we're back on Get Up here, uh, and we head to oh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Justin Fields and the Steelers. 
Yeah, Justin Fields told it. Coming off a loss to Dallas may at be, only 226 we, we may, yards of offense on the season. Maybe what Fields has accounted Fields for eight touchdowns against two benched. turnovers. But the offense is ranked 26th in scoring. Here was Shefty on the Steelers' ongoing quarterback well, Russell conundrum. Russell's been getting healthier and healthier. And I think he's now at the point where he is healthy enough to play. So that's going to be a Mike Tomlin decision. I think at some point in time here, it's not going to surprise me if they turn to Russell Wilson. I don't know whether that's next week or the week after. So that's so. Isn't that interesting, uh, Graz? That's that's funny because going into here's where where I find it actually really really funny is last week they were comparing Justin Fields and Pat Mahomes. Seriously, last week they were talking about how good Justin Fields was in comparison to. Pat Mahomes. Now we're talking about, well, Russell Wilson's closer to getting healthy and all. But I will say that you, when you listen to that, that's your usual Adam Schefter, you know, uh, making shit up. There's no news there that they said, well, he's getting ready to start. He's just kind of saying, well, here's what I think is going to happen. So there's that. But, um, yeah, I think – to get a win in Pittsburgh on the road when most people thought we didn't have a chance, when most people thought we were going to be two and three, uh, to me, I think that that was huge. So that's what we got for you good people today. Um, I've got to go out here and get back working on this roof. And we'll be back later on today, live streaming for the Dan Salio Show. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Peace out. I fire Howie. Fucking fire the motherfucker! Stupid motherfucker! What an idiot! What an idiot! Dallas has Amore Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver! Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson, he's ass! He's stupid. I fire his ass. I fire his ass. I mean, how he's got to be stupid. What are you doing? You just let Dallas take him. You 